So thank you, John, for joining us today. We get a lot of inquiries about people's battery management. And John, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background with Century. Well, well thanks for the opportunity, Teresa. We, uh, well, I've been with Century for just on you know, February this year, or February 2021, it'll be, it'll be 31 years. And, uh, and yeah, I've been um, moved into a training role, which I'm thoroughly enjoying, thank you. Oh, fantastic. So thank you so much for your time today. No, it's great. It's great to be able to share this information. You know, it's all sort of locked away. And, and there's some little things that, that people can do that will obviously lengthen and, and uh, lengthen the service life of their batteries. I mean, you know, if we can help with that, we're more than happy. So talk to us about what the main parts of a battery are. Well, um, there's actually four, probably four main components within the battery. There's the container, which is going to house all the components, and that's got to be able to survive the environment that it's in. You know, sometimes it's in um, hot environments, it's, it's got to suffer um, vibration, all those sorts of things. So you've got the container. Then inside the container, you have the grids, and the grids are what actually hold the paste um, on the plate, and, and, and the grid actually is what allows the electricity to flow out of the battery. Then you've got the paste itself. So depending on the type of battery um, is the mix up of the paste that actually goes on the plate. Um, it's different from a cranking battery to a deep cycle battery. And then you've got the electrolyte, which works as a, a coolant and also allows the second part of that chemical reaction to happen. So our camper trailers, we sell them with 12 volt power system. So what does the 12 volt mean? Well, the 12 volt is actually the pressure of the voltage uh, within the system. There's a couple of different systems. Most of our automotive stuff, um, cars, camper trailers all operate on 12 volt, but there are some trucks that will operate on 24 volt. Then we actually put two 12 volt batteries in series and uh, multiply the voltage, but it's just, really is just that if you imagine it like a uh, like a, a water pump so the pumps actually driving the, the electrons through the through the system the same as pumping the water through the pipe is that mainly do you think it's 12 volt people go off the grid and they need to be able to capture um, power from another source and that's a, an appropriate battery system 12 volt yeah look it's been the norm for a, for a considerable amount of time it's a it's a voltage that Sort of works it's, it's unilateral um you know solar panels battery chargers all that sort of thing are all set up to operate within that within that specification so lumberjack campers we put um century batteries in our trailers and they're labeled 95 amp hour what does that mean 95 amp hour it's the capacity of the battery from a full state of charge to, to discharge or what we consider to be discharged. So if we take, for example, 100 amp hour, what we're gonna use 100 because it's just easier for calculations. So you divide that by, by an amp hour rate. So it's 100 amp hour divided by the 20 hour rate gives you five amps. So that means that you can draw that five amps for 10 hours, sorry, for 20 hours um, till that battery is at the point where it's, you know, I guess, discharged. So if you're going to draw more than those five amps then the battery won't last for 20 hours. So if you're going to draw six or seven or eight amps, that time will decrease. If you don't draw five amps and you only draw two or three, let's say all you're doing is running um, some LED lighting, then that battery will actually last more than that 20 hours. So the 20 hour rate is an industry standard. So it's the amp hours divided by that gives you how many amps that you can actually discharge out of that battery to give you that 20 hour rate. So hopefully, that, hopefully that makes sense. That discharge level is the most important thing that we want to make sure we talk yes. about because it's not getting it to nothing. We can't get it That's to right, nothing. exactly. And, and with a, a, a flooded or a lead acid battery, we recommend and, and so do other manufacturers that um, it's only taken down to 50% of its capacity and that way you will maximize the life or the service life of the battery 
So Lumberjack campers, we use two types of batteries from Century. We have the deep cycle battery, which we put in our camper trailers and our AGMs, which we put in our hybrids. Why do we put in two different types of batteries? Well, there's a combination of, um, of, of what you do. The, the deep cycle one you refer to is a flooded battery. Um, that's used where the, the application is external um, because that battery actually vents to atmosphere. Um, it's, it's flooded, it actually has loose electrolyte in it. The difference between that and the AGM or absorbed glass mat is that the material, the, the, elect the electrolyte is absorbed into the plate. And then that is then pushed against the plate or, or into the fabric and is pushed against the plate. It helps with vibration, but more importantly, it can actually be used internally because it doesn't vent externally to atmosphere unless there's an issue. But in the normal circumstances, it will just, it just recombinates or recirculates what's inside. So it doesn't bend. So the vibration is probably the biggest, the, the, the key difference. Um, there's certainly, the, there is a cost. Um, there is a cost difference between the two, uh, but they, um, it's mainly the fact that the AGM can be used inside the hybrid as opposed to the flooded battery. And the application in which Lumberjack are using it is perfectly fine. We've yes. got that ventilation hole on the, on the uh, camper trailer under the bottom, which takes out the deep cycle, um, what would you call it? The, what it, what does it, it, well, it gets rid of the, the vents, the, the gases, yeah. Yeah, yeah gases, yeah. And, and look, I think, um, you, know, we'll, we'll, you know, the relationship that, that um, Century have had with Lumberjack goes back quite a few years. So, you know, the, the proof's in the pudding, you know, the products do what they're designed to do They've, for your application, yeah. yeah. Give complete confidence, absolutely. In Lumberjack camper trailers, on the control panel, there's a number that shows when we're looking at the battery charge status. And we also give you a voltmeter and it shows you the same number. What does that mean? Well, Casey, the, the voltage, as, we, as we've said earlier, is the actual uh, the pressure. So at 12.6 or above, the battery is considered to be a full state of charge. Um, we go 12.5, um, you know, your, belt, your battery's in a healthy state of charge but you need to keep a bit of an eye on it to make sure it doesn't drop much lower than that. Then you go from got a 12.1 to 12.4 or 12.4 to 12.1, then the battery does need to be recharged to get it back up to that 12.6. Any, excuse me, anything below 12 volts is to consider to be uh, fully discharged and, and the battery needs to be recharged as soon as possible. Um, what will happen is if you leave it in that flat state of charge or discharge state, um, there's a, um, a chemical reaction that starts to happen inside the battery called sulfation, and, and it will start to deteriorate the plates inside the battery. So that voltmeter number is not like a phone where it tells you what percent the battery is. No, so it's actually- You're not putting it in and saying, the 13 percent is not it's not a percentage it's a, it's a reading of volts yes just without confusing people on that little meat volt meter yeah it's just um it's just reading the the actual voltage the, the real-time voltage or what we call open circuit voltage so that's that's the voltage when there's no load on the batteries um and, and that'll give you the that that charge condition so it's important to put that in while it's not charging would you get a reading um yeah once once you've charged it and you let it rest then i would recheck it to make sure that it is fully charged it's a, it's a resting number not it, while it, you actually it got, is. You know, got the batteries on charge themselves yes and look most of the later model chargers um they, they're a, um, a stage charger so they'll go from a full charge from a bulk charge or a boost charge they'll go to a um a maintenance charge and then they'll just sit in sorry then they'll just sit in this maintenance mode uh, when the batteries uh, are fully charged. So general expectations and lifespan of a battery, talk to us about that. Well, look, I guess they don't last forever. Um, and, and it's a little bit like a, um, a petrol tank in the car. You know, you, you fill it up and you get an expectation you're gonna get so many kilometers out of that tank of fuel. If you don't refill it all the way to full, 
then you're not going to get that same amount of mileage or kilometers out of it the next time you drive it. The battery is exactly the same. You need, if it's 100% charge, and as we said, let's say they're taking that five amps, they're going to get 20 hours of use out of it. If, if they only charge it to 90%, 85% of its capacity, then they're not going to get that 20 hours out of it again. There are some things that you can do to help, um, I guess, maximize that, that service life of the battery. But um, yeah, that's, it'll all depend on you know, how much current is being drawn out of the battery. Um, where it actually lives, they, they prefer to be, you know, they're built to, to withstand vibration, temperature, those sorts of things. Um, you know, if you can minimize that, they're going to last a little bit longer. If you keep them fully charged, they're going to last a little bit longer. If you keep them clean and, and any corrosion away from the terminal, they're going to last longer. So there's a combination of things, but you know, it, it's really is how long is a piece of string. So let's run through how to charge the batteries with a charger that has alligator clips. We provide you with a basic charger, but you can ask us to upgrade to a century charger, which has more power and will charge your batteries quicker. So with the alligator clips, you get two, one is black and one is red. So this particular trailer has two batteries. So when we're charging with the alligator clips, we need to come across one clip on one and one clip on the other. So in this case, it's been installed with the red to the front. So we get the red alligator clip and clip that onto the wing nut. Then the black one goes onto the other battery, but it's actually the blue side of the battery. And we clip that on. And that's nice and secure. And now we plug our charger into 240 power and the charger itself will start cycling through the charge process. So let's run through what the purpose of the Anderson plug is on the drawbar. It has two, two purposes. One, it will plug into your car if you have had an Anderson plug installed. And if that's the case, then while you're driving, the batteries will charge. The other thing you can do with this is We've got our Century battery charger here. So what we can do is instead of plugging the alligator clips to the rear of the trailer where the batteries are, you can plug this straight into here. So that's together now. That's now connected to the charger and now we connect the charger to 240. So that's doing it all for you. You don't have to worry about using the alligator clips. So here we have a solar panel and the solar panel has an Anderson plug on the end of it and then the trailer comes standard with the Anderson plug that you would normally plug into the back of the car to charge it while you're driving. But in this case we're going to use this Anderson plug connection here and we're going to plug that into our solar panel, move this around into the sun, now you're charging your batteries with the solar panel. So with the Lumberjack camper trailers, there's a couple of ways to charge the batteries directly to the battery or an Anderson plug connection on the drawbar. Is there any advantage of either one over the other? Not, not really. It's just really the convenience factor. I think some of the, in the positional location where some of the batteries are, it's very awkward to get out with the alligator clips um, and using the Anderson plug, it's just that much more convenient. They can plug it in. Um, it's like a set and forget, turn the, plug it in, turn the charger on and then just let it do its job. So while I'm charging the batteries, do I need to leave the isolator switch on, on the camper trailer? No, no, the batteries, the, the way that you guys have got it wired is that the battery charger will charge those batteries. All it's doing is it's isolating all the outgoing current, not the ingoing. So how low should I let the batteries go before I put them on charge? Ideally, around about 12.45 volts. 12.45, 12.5, that's the optimum um, area where you can to, to start to recharge them. And, and look, we, we, we don't live in an ideal world. So potentially there will be times when they'll get, they'll be um, off grid, they'll be remote. Um, it's cloudy days, they won't be able to charge it with solar. Um, they don't have a generator and it may get down to 12.2, 12.3. The key is, as soon as they get the opportunity to recharge those batteries, they should. 
Don't go home and store it in that state of charge. So I've got my camper on charge at the moment and it has a charge, a charge reading, but then when I take off the charger, it drops down. Why does it do that? Um, Teresa, that's quite normal. What happens is uh, you get what they call a surface charge in the battery. So the battery charger is designed to charge higher than the, I guess the 12.6 volts that the battery will sit at. Um, and that's all about recombining the electrolyte and, and things inside it. So what will happen is once that battery is fully charged on the charger, you'll get a higher reading. When you, when you disconnect the battery charger, it will settle. Generally, it takes a couple of hours and it will settle back down to its resting, um, what we call OCV or open circuit voltage. But it is quite normal, so it's nothing to be alarmed about. So I've just gotten home from a camping trip. So what do I need to do to make sure I look after my batteries? Uh, make sure they're charged. That, that is the key. Um, it's a bit like your water tank. You know, you fill your water tank up to make sure there's no bugs and things get in the, in the water. Um, you do exactly the same with the battery. If you keep it clean, make sure it's kept clean, top it up, put it on the, or, or put it on the charger in terms of topping it up, and there's not much more you can do. Um, but it really is important that it doesn't sit around in a low state of charge or, or discharge state. So could I just put it on the charge and then come back the next day, take it off charge and see what the reading is? Is that what that, you that, that would I, that's what I would come back yeah, look, that, that's what I would suggest you do. Yeah. So you come home, um, you put it on the charger. Um, sorry, you come home, you put it on the charger. Give it uh, 24, 48 hours, then recheck it and make sure that it's there. Um, you know, if you're going to store the, the camper for extended period periods of time, um, again, I would suggest every couple of months, you just pop the voltmeter on, see what the voltage is, pop the charger on. If, it, you know, if it's below that 12.45, 12, 12 then pop the charger on, give it another 12 hours um, and just constantly keep an eye on it that way. That will maximise the life of the battery. So I've just arrived at the camping grounds and I've got access to 240. What do I need to do to make sure that I have the correct battery charge and maintain my batteries whilst I'm using the camper? Well, it's just a matter of with the 240, you've got your, um, your, your uh, charger. Uh, hook your charger up the same as what you would at home um, and keep an eye on it. That's really uh, all you would need to do if you've got, um, you know, it, depending on what your loads are that you're actually drawing out of the battery, you might only have to put it on, you know, if you're there for a week, you might only have to put the battery charger on, you know, in the halfway through the halfway through your stay, depending on what you've been, what's been drawn out of the batteries. So I'm now camping off the grid. I do not have access to any 240. What do I need to do to make sure that I keep my batteries charged? I need to have a generator, a solar panel. What do you recommend? Uh, well, either, uh, Teresa, depending on, um, on, on your own setup. Um, there are some extremely good panels out there now that will sort of keep the, the batteries topped up. Um, you know, you could end up with, if you do end up with lots of um, no sun days, we call them. Uh, and you have room to carry a generator, then by all means. But um, certainly, if you're going to be away for an extended period of time, you will need to have some way of topping those batteries up. Otherwise, you're going to end up um, you know, doing significant harm to them if you can constantly discharge them. So I'm driving off-road now on corrugations for long periods of time. What do I need to do to make sure that I keep my batteries in good condition under those terrain changes? Um, look, the main thing is the hold down bracket. Um, you know, the battery doesn't like to be you know, bad enough with the corrugations on the, in the suspension of the vehicle. But if it's bouncing around inside the battery box, it's certainly not good for it. So I would be checking the hold down brackets periodically, like even, a, even for us, you know, you'll get to know it, but um, if you're concerned that, you know, when you stop for lunch, just a quick flip the door down, make sure that the things are nice and tight. Um, certainly the terminals, um, corrugations managed to undo uh, nuts that 
um, it would never come undone under other circumstances. Um, I know from my own experiences. So um, yeah, hold down brackets, terminals, um, just, just checking those periodically. The same as you would, you know, you check the wheel nuts, you check the ball coupling, um, those sorts of things that just make it part of that little maintenance regime. Yeah, the result of that would be uh, insufficient battery charge. Yes, or, yeah, if one of the terminals come, come loose. Or no power from the battery if you, want, it, if you need it for something. Yeah, and it could be even more catastrophic than that where the thing could short out. So it's really important that the, uh, you know, that the battery be held down securely. So for long term storage of my trailer, either at home or a storage facility, what do I need to do to make sure that I keep those batteries in top condition? Um, Teresa, the, the, the key is keeping them charged, keeping them clean, keeping them charged. The, um, um, it should be just part of a, a maintenance regime, I guess, that you would, um, that you would normally do, but certainly long term storage. If they wanted to, they could actually take the batteries out of the unit, pop them on their bench, sit the charger beside them. So it's a, you know, there's a mental reminder that, oh, I need to, I need to do, you know, check them every now and again, or uh, you know, some of the other things that pop a note on the calendar or in your phone these days, you know, every couple of months, camper, camper batteries, and then just go and check them, and if need be, pop the charger on them overnight. Yeah, well, at the storage facility, taking them home with you is probably the best option. Otherwise, you need to go there and put them on charge every couple of months. <laughs> yeah, that could be quite inconvenient. Yeah. Well, you tend to forget, don't you? So. Yeah. That's and, and the key is keeping a charge. And as we mentioned earlier, if if those batteries end up in a um, a fully discharged state, then this chemical reaction starts to happen um, called sulfation. And, and what will happen is when they go and recharge those batteries where you had that plate surface that would normally carry all the, all the material, only a percentage of that plate will recover. And then you can, as you continually do that, you start to lose more and more and more of that capacity of the battery. So where they used to, you know, get their 20 hours out of it with their five amp drawer, they might only get, you know, 18, 17, 15. And as the, the more that they, leave it in that discharge state, the less of the plate is that's going to recover. So if you had some tips about how to maintain the batteries and get the best lifespan out of them, what would what would be your short list? Um, four key things. Keep the battery clean, particularly the top of the battery. Some of the, um, what will happen is if I get dirt on the top of the battery, uh, it can actually self-discharge because they'll get damp. So keep the top of the battery clean. Keep the terminals nice and tightly or, or firm and clean. You know, clear any, make sure there's no corrosion. The battery hold down bracket, make sure that that's nice and tight, nice and firm. So the battery can't move. Um, and we've said it all along, most important thing is keep them charged. Thanks very much, John. Oh, it's my pleasure.